Hello, this is part two of the bicuspid tower Fremencio analysis. You can see that here we have the screen lake set up already. So let's look at the septal length. You can see here in bicuspid valve, typically there's very short or absent septal length. So we're going to skip that and go into the measurements of the aortic root. So here you can see a type zero morphology of a bicuspid valve. So you go to the right side, you click the bicuspid icon. This is typically used for type zero. If you have type one, you can still use the free leaflet deep icon. So now I bisect the sinuses here, and then I place a dot at the base. And you don't need to rotate the open red circle because you can just go to 180 degree on the opposite side and place a dot there. And then you just have to fine tune the dot at the base of the sinus as shown here. Now I do the red dot. And do that here the same. And then you just make sure your center line is preserved. Now you want to make see that this patient probably has an ascending aortic aneurysm. So what you can do is to measure the ascending aortic diameter. And you can see here on both long and short axis, it's over 4.5 centimeters. So this patient, I will recommend surgery over tower because you need to have concomitant ascending aortic replacement. And I can also save this as a screenshot to illustrate that. So once you have the annular plane intact, then you click confirm. And there's your analyst here. Of, I would also crop tight so you can zoom in here for your measurements and analysis. So let's measure the analyst with the lasso tool. You trace around the analyst here. Make sure you make, include the contrast portion only. Now remember what I said, uh, earlier that you, I typically trace across the calcium because if you go outside here, you overestimate. You can see it's 381 now rather than more like a 373 in terms of area. And same thing if you, here you want to have maintain a smooth contour. So for example, if you go inside this calcium, you can see the perimeter goes up to 70.9 rather than 69.2. So you might overestimate the perimeter and you might reduce the area unknowingly. So once that is done, I save the images like I've done before. This process is pretty much the same as how you would do it for the standard tower workout. So you can see this is the LBOT. So I right click the label, the LBOT, and you do the same thing and put it, save an image. Next, I'm gonna to go to sinotubular junction. You can see that here, the sinotubular junction is very effaced, okay? It's hard to even tell where it is. But when you spin around, you can see where the left main takeoff is. So we cut roughly right above that, and I'm gonna label it here with the right click and select sinus or salva, and then using the ruler times two tool, you can hear, you can do that here, and there is your sinotubular junction dimensions. I right click to label that. Then I come down here to show the left main height, roughly this, and your sinus or salva dimensions, and I cut the sinus height in half. Now in this case, it's not gonna be free sinuses, so I'm just gonna draw a line across the maximum portion across the two sinuses, and then the perpendicular intercommissural distance. So some people would talk about asymptotic superannular sizing. I still do annular sizing here. You can see that. Uh, but I also can measure intercommissural distance to take a look because you can see this is a very large root compared to the, the annular dimensions. So I certainly wouldn't necessarily size based on the intercommissural distance. So next, I'm going to draw the box of a 23 balloon expandable valve. This patient, inner dimensions, recall, can be 
goal 23, balloon expandable versus 26, self-expanding. Of course, can be also other type of self-expanding valve as well. So I like to draw this box here. So with 23 millimeter valve, the total height is 18 up full expansion. And I would put 80, 20 in terms of deployment depth. And then I put a 23 millimeter distance here. You can see that this is done using the distance two. And for vertical distance, if you need to draw anything along the line here, so for example, if I want to go from here, look at the left side is high, I right click and you can say measure for basal plane, but you can also do custom length measurement. That's what I did here with it. 18 millimeters, so measure from basal plane, that is the left sinus height. So as you may have seen my other video before, I like to put a circle here of the valve size that I plan to implant. So I go right click and do the ellipse. And then I draw a circle and right click to keep circular and then make it into 23 millimeters. Because if you go to use a 23 millimeter balloon expandable valve, if you Use a self-expanding valve, you can pick the weights of that valve size to mimic the virtual implant here because I want to see where this calcium may sit once you expand the valve. There might be a risk of annular injury or aortic root injury if you're not careful. So you want to be able to customize your inflation strategy if you use a balloon expandable valve. So I do your my one millimeter root measurements here. I usually do up to 10 millimeters. That should be sufficient just to get an idea how the valve will fit the particular root anatomy. So this is the STJ, so I know save the picture. Sinuses, I save the picture as well. Now I look at the left main root anatomy, I save the picture. And then I bring the green solid dot over to the left corner. You can see type zero bicuspid typically about almost 180 degree coronary distribution. So I put the right coronary height here. This is the right sinus height measured from baseline. This is, you can see here, right coronary height. I'll take a picture here. Then I go to the annular plane and then I look at the periodic root and ascending anatomy. We know that this patient has ascending atopathy. So I just click here to show that. And the cocky pup view, it's a classic view. We zoom in to show the leaflet morphology and the calcification. Now, people ask, how do you do the root angle and the implant angle? So what I do is, because there are only two dots at the annulus, I basically line up with the red open circle and then put the eye with the CM tool perpendicular to that. So you can see that now, when you zoom in here on the floral view, when you slide your right button to lighten up, you can see the leaflet morphology and you can get the root angle going between the two dots and there's your root angle. And you can see it's a pretty horizontal aorta. So I can save that. I can also save this. So this is 17 cranial two. So we're gonna do that to match. And you can see this is what it look like on floral when you implant the valve with a coplanar view. And I would go use this to landmark the calcium rather the annulus with your pigtail as you possession and deploy the valve. So I find these two views very useful. So, with that, let's take a look at the report. 
you can see here, I'm going to shift this ascending aorta replacement down. That's just my personal preference to do this. Keep the reports consistent. And you can see now it goes from the analyst. You can see some analyst calcium. So in terms of your implant strategy and expectation of PBL, that will be important. You want to see how it fits with the calcium of the leaflets relative to the valve that you superimpose. You need to discuss, though, this patient are likely pre-BAV. If this patient is not a surgical candidate and needs to essentially be considered for TAVR, then you can to facilitate the valve deployment and expansion. And of course, the access and the arch anatomy you can also do. So I won't include that here. So you can save this report as a PDF and share it with your heart team. Of course, you can also save the free mental session as well. So I hope this is helpful and we'll see you next time.